Alright, now that you're all hypnotized, I'm going to finish my yoga, my, my yoga, my material yoga, my stretching, my flexing of my mental capacity. Got a couple more people I want to do some tarot for. And then I might end it. I might talk about some stuff. I might bore you. Let's see. Sage. Here's what we got for tonight. Eight point three. It's a good one. Okay, so first up is Juniperus. Judy Juniperus. But our this is a pretty cool looking card. Kind of looks like a, a man in a high castle. Number four in the major arcana. See what it has to say. A mark stands on his granite balcony, high above a thriving city. In one hand, he holds a bronze scepter, the other reaches over his vast realm. The rooftops below him stretch all the way to the distant mountains. The Emperor brings structure to the world of the Empress. He turns her raw power into the fabric of civilization. While she is the feminine principle, mothering, nature, and love, he is the male principle, fathering, society, and ideas. Together they rule our world. The emperor represents protectiveness and productivity, stewardship, and enterprise. Expansive ideas put into practice. He is the force that organizes and rules, that makes decisions and lays down the law. Culture can only flourish once basic survival needs are met. The emperor symbolizes the stability that comes with a peaceful and just society, one in which people are free to fulfill their creative potential. The Emperor is totally committed to progress, and this can lead to intolerance of anything that seems to stand in the way. In the name of his doctrine, he can become greedy, corrupt, and oppressive. When the Emperor cuts off his feelings or tries to control nature instead of guiding it, he is on the road to becoming a tyrant. 
For this reason, free thinkers may balk at the emperor, loathing his dictates that seem to demand conformity. They may vilify the rules and institutions that are that are modern expression of his energy. That are our modern expression of his energy. Yet the system also brings us roads, libraries, and other amenities that we often take for granted. Without the emperor, there would be no order. The world would be chaos. And this is just what this thing has to say. Like, uh, I don't agree with a lot of this stuff. Uh, this seems very, like, order out of chaos and very dualistic right here. But there can also be something to be gained or learned from this as well. There, There is always uh, bits of truth. Even even in uh, lies or half truths. In a reading, the emperor asks you to look at your relationship with authority, which is basically what this card is. Looking at your relationship with the masculine energy. The push rather, rather than the pull. He challenges you to live by your own code of ethics and not just follow blindly the behavior society expects. He calls for self discipline and integrity. Govern yourself in any realms over which you have power with a wise and steady hand. Use his energy to create something. To assert yourself, which means use your energy. Use that masculine aspect of kind of uh, taking the wheel, driving your own vehicle, creating your own reality, and taking responsibility and ownership of this. Use his energy to create something, to assert yourself, or to set something, or to set some necessary boundaries. And be sure to be honest with yourself. Are you living by the letter and not by the spirit of the law? Are there places where you are being rigid or oppressive? Dominion over oneself is necessary. Dominion over others is not. It's a very, uh... It's a triggery card because there's a lot of dualistic perception within that card. But uh, try to read between the lines. As with a lot of things, anything in life, read between the lines and try to tap into the true essence, the true intent, and go from that point of perspective. Nirvana Burns, you are up next. This is this is uh yeah a good one for you. The two of cups. I always like getting this card. Relation. Two people circle round inside a fairy ring of mushrooms and flowers, hands held high in a toast.
by their commitment in cups, symbols of the emotions they are coupled with. The faces of the dancers show both happiness and trepidation for the future. The steps they take together draw the gods that bless their union. As in the lover's card, Pan and Quan Yin bring pleasure and peace. A star shines inspiration and healing down on the new couple. And at the edge of the ring, a serpent lies coiled in the shape of infinity. This card shows the beginning of an important relationship or a new phase in a current one. Love, once lost, may be found again. A promise is made, friendship pledged, and trust begins to grow. Courtship is a dance, a dynamic interplay of opposites. From it, a harmony of forces, both inner and outer, emerges. Cooperation, sympathy, and possibility, and possibly romance, blossoms within this loving and healing union. The Two of Cups can also indicate aspects within yourself finding peace together. Remember that you must learn to love yourself, to truly love another. That's a magical card. And from what you were talking about, Nirvana, on uh, Mayan Jin's last little show, that seems like it should be right on for you, and hopefully promising. And just as a reminder, with uh, any kind of oracle or readings, contemplate the inner message. Even even if um, the reading may be kind of uh, suggesting things in your outer world. Take that within and contemplate those aspects of yourself, your own self, and see how that reflects in your outer world. Nice, good shite. Good shite. Next, we're going to do Miss I Am Frog in a Box with the Epic Garden. Inner and outer. The Hermit. This is a really cool card. Number nine in the Major Arcana. The nine. The reverse six. The budding. On a path of wind, on a path winding down a mountain, an aged and serene woman walks. She raises one hand to the night sky, in the other she carries a shimmering lantern. Her shoes are rough, and a halo shines around her head. The hermit seeks true understanding alone. She wanders through her inner landscape, listening for the voice of God. The search demands her full attention. So she turns away from ordinary things. Her insights, her insights come through dreams and visions. Over time, she has gained wisdom, maturity, and self-reliance. When this card appears, its message is clear. Make room in your life for spiritual matters. Take time alone to reflect and look within. And, I don't know, a lot of these cards that I've been pulling lately, I feel like, uh... Just what I've been observing and feeling, like these are uh, 
really good reminders and messages for all of us to go within, to remember what's truly important, and to dedicate ourselves to that, to dedicate um, cultivating uh, that knowingness and wisdom. The hermit holds up her lantern of truth, not just for herself, but for all seekers. She may be someone you can look to for guidance. But whether she symbolizes a wise teacher or your own intuition, she urges patience as you walk down your chosen path. Stay open as you walk with the hermit, for one day you may be called to fill her shoes and be a guiding light to others. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, now we're going to do one for the genie, the Mayan Jin. You probably will not see this, but that's okay. I'm going to do one for you anyways. Because I love you. Not like that. No homo. I love you as a reflection of myself. Because you are me and I am you. And we are all the genies. Eight of Wands, and you knew there was going to be fire somewhere in this card. Obviously. I expected to pull the Devil card, to be honest. Eight of Wands, Opportunities. Good one. Eight Flaming Staves, speed like arrows over a sleeping countryside. They burn like comets as they fly. A light with an elemental intensity. Hmm. New energies are coming in and sparking rapid growth. Pathways are opening, speeding progress toward your goals. Opportunity may arrive at your door in the form of a letter, phone call, or surprise visitor. Under these exciting new influences, creativity and inspiration can flourish. This sudden burst of activity can be refreshing after a period of delay or stagnation. With all this potential in the air, now is a good time to take risks and initiate activities. As everything moves fast with this card, be prepared. You may need to respond with mercurial swiftness. And once again, this is a card representing, like, this is dead on with, uh, what me, what a lot of uh, like-minded, like-spirited, like-hearted people are going through right now. Dead on. And the last one is going to be for another one who probably won't see this, but that's fine. Sensei Owl Bob. Owly Baba. This one's for you. The Crone's Disciple. And on the off chance that you do see this, drink your damn pee. Drink your goddamn pee. Come on. Come on. Enough's enough. I mean, yeah, I I hope that this is uh, the future, the now, the the now realized into the future. Because that's what's needed for the tr all of our relations to come together.
for the union to take place. Fulfillment. A family dances together under an arc of iridescent chalices. Flowers spring up wherever they step, and autumn leaves shower down on the happy scene. The Ten of Cups embodies all the love promised in the Ace of Cups. It speaks to the deep satisfaction that comes from finding your path in life. Having a strong sense of purpose can bring wholeness, fulfillment, and the feeling of being at home with yourself and others. This card celebrates the joys of familial love. It speaks to the special trust that is built over time through sharing trials and adventures. This understanding lends a quality of security, contentment, and harmony to one's life. In our busy world, the simple pleasures of domestic life are easy to overlook. This card asks you to take a moment to appreciate your life, your home, and your loved ones. Open your heart, dance with the universe, and feel the love that pours forth for you, from you and for you. That was some good stuff. I kind of felt like I just pulled cards from myself there, to be honest, and I guess, I mean, really, you know, I, I did. Because it's all the same thing, isn't it? This is the last day I will be consuming beverages of the alcoholic nature. Save maybe some kombucha, small fermented, small alcoholic beverages. But uh, I will begin my liquid fast, liquid and orin fast, um, starting in the morning, starting after I wake up from this next sleep cycle. And usually I go from the, I start on the new moon, or around there, around the new moon, to the full moon. And then around the full moon, to the new moon, is when I will consume a little bit more solid foods. Um, I will consume the fire water, then continue to consume the orin. Um, so in general, I bulk up uh, during those times. I've been doing this for a while now. I'll do another video to go a little bit deeper and to be a little bit more clearer about this, about the things that I've learned from it. And it's just kind of been an experiment for me to witness what happens the more I continue this cycle, this pattern. And um, I'm not, it is going to reach a point to where uh, it comes to a fruition, to where it just is seamless, like it it's just becomes one thing instead of, uh, you know, the cycles of the moon, it's just, it's going to become uh, one, one fluid thing. But until then, I'm finding that I'm continuing to uncover n more depths in, in myself and in the outer world, uh, the natural world, and feeling deeper, feeling the cycles of the moon, because this is what I'm going by, so I'm paying <laughs> uh, very close attention, obviously, to the cycles of the moon. And, and then also observing and witnessing the, the effect that those cycles have on uh, all of life, people included, animals, plants. And my understanding is, is just, it, it keeps growing and, and expanding and fluxing, um, breathing in and out. 
Um, so one of the things I, I witness is that when I am off of this uh, liquid, okay, and first of all, whenever I first started, it was more extreme, um, more... Uh, intense, I guess, but more strict. And I, I have kept up with this uh, kind of strictness in, okay, I'm doing this, I'm going to keep doing it, I'm not going to have, like, you know, uh, breaks or uh, little shortcuts or anything. Like, I've continued it, and I've been uh, vigilant in it. But uh, because I've been doing it for quite a while now, um, and I do this fast, this liquid fast, whenever I am, I continue to work and, and everything, and uh, I need to be able to be aware, uh, not dr drain myself so much. Because whenever we do fast, and the more intense fast is. You, you need to dedicate some time to where you can just allow yourself to, if you need to have your random nap, uh, whatever you need, like, allow that space for yourself with, with more intense fasts. So, with this, now that I've done it for so long, I'm pretty much just, uh, liquidize everything as best as I can, because I don't want to dive too deep in, or make it too extreme of a spike towards uh, kind of like needing to sleep, because I really like to allow my body to rest when it's telling me it needs to rest. But when we're at work, or whenever we have, you know, our responsibilities or whatever, like, whatever things are calling upon our awareness, like, we, we have to ignore that feeling and continue forth. Which is why I just cut out more solid foods. I cut out alcohol during this liquid fast. And I lose... It depends. Sometimes, uh, like on my last one, it was very strange. I actually seem to gain weight, which does happen sometimes during fast. Your body thinks that you are starving itself, starving yourself, that you're starving the body, and so it holds on to uh, energy and fats and liquids. And that's just a phase of it. One phase that can happen, it does happen, so it, it's not necessarily an uncommon thing for this to happen. But one of the things that I've noticed, uh, especially like in my workouts, in my uh, meditations, in my yoga practices, my breath practices, my pranayama, I observe the quality that happens whenever I am on and off the fast. And a rising trend that seems to be happening now is that whenever I do consume the fire water and consume more solid foods, um, naturally my body is going to collect more energy and expand. So what I've been witnessing is I'm going through this expansion and then a when I'm on my fast, um, a clarity that happens. Um, things become more fluid and, what's the word? It's a little bit more direct. It's taking away from the excess, but it's also taking what I've built up with 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 the excess energy and is using that to build in the foundations 
and what I'm witnessing and feeling like is with foundations like my bones, my muscles, my skeletal st structure. Um, yeah, just a, a, a revamp is happening. A It's very much like breathing with the in and the out. Yeah, I don't have the words right now or the clarity right now to really express what is happening. But, uh, both physical, the, the, all the bodies, the mental, the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, all of these things I'm, I'm be, being aware of, witnessing and observing the effects. And so it, it's very much a expansion in all of those aspects. And sometimes when I'm off the liquid fast, it's especially towards the end is an expansion towards excess and so I'm always looking forward to the fast for the clarity the mental and physical clarity that happens and then the same with when I'm ending going towards the end of my fast I'm always looking forward ah not only to my beverages again, but also to the more solid foods, which I usually ferment as well. So everything's still becoming, it's still remaining fluid. So I'm enjoying this process and I'm enjoying the unraveling of the process and seeing more layers of it allowing more layers to come forth and then just witnessing what's happening and encouraging encouraging um, beneficial engagement with what I know deep down is truth and is real and is pure and yeah we can talk about purity and uh, this and that and yeah you're not gonna see very many people talk about purity and doing things like drinking beverages of the alcoholic kind or taking in taking in fire through the lungs even but Purity can ex be experienced in the moment, in every moment, as soon as we decide. As soon as our intent is aligned with, with that purity. Because it's all dependent upon our feelings and our intentions, our intuitions. That's where it begins. And that's where it ends. Back into the energy, into the feeling. Until it begins again. Or bluffs. There's no beginning, only there's no. Sorry. Well, it just depends on how you look at it because the ending is the beginning, and the beginning is the ending. It's all perspective.